I'm Symbol Desai, Vice President of Health at Apple. I love that Apple has been integrating all of your health segments into all of the big events, but Deidre has gotten the paddleboard, Kevin's been dancing, Jules bikes, Jeff hikes, Jay, I can only assume, runs laps around the entire state. Yeah. <laughs> Have you given any thought to what your big intro might be one day, like pushing Craig out of the hot rod and just driving it straight into the theater? Or medical chopper right onto the top of the ring? Because I think Lisa Jackson is still up there. <laughs> I have not. Those are great ideas. I've always wondered how she got up there and how she got back down. But yeah, and she looks so great when she's up there. I'm like, how do you do that? When Apple first approached you about working with them on health, did the image of like a giant iPod with a stethoscope flash in your head or like just what were your thoughts on the one of the biggest companies in technology wanting to be this serious about personal health tech? You know, it's interesting. Uh, it's a really good question. I think when we uh, when I first joined and um, why I've always been so excited about the work we do in health is that, you know, our devices are always with you. So whether it's watch or, f or phone, it, you know, especially with watch it being such a personal device, we're with you all the time. And, you know, a few of us talk about this here at Apple is that one of the things that we're really focused on is how do you how do you change the perception of health? Because a lot of people think about health care is when you're sick and you think about wellness and fitness when you're doing well. Yes. And one really important goal is how do we bring those two together, bring those worlds together and really focus? Think about your health is just holistically staying healthy and empowering you to be the best version of you to be healthy and able to use our devices in really unique ways, potentially to partner with an individual to keep them healthy is something that we're really, I, I've always been really excited by it and intrigued by. And something that as a team, I think we think about a lot is, you know, we almost feel like we have a responsibility to help individuals empower themselves with more information about their health so they can be their best versions of them and live their healthier life. Tim Cook famously, he said, if you zoom out into the future and you look back and you ask the question, what was Apple's greatest contribution to mankind? It will be about health. With that kind of top-down support, is it empowering? Is it a lot of pressure? Is it both? I mean, it's empowering. It, 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 I think what is always important to remember is it's such an important focus and health permeates every aspect of the work we do in at Apple. So, you know, obviously there's the health and watch features we do, but even if you think about in iOS 15, we introduced um, focus, right? And so the ability to really think about how do you use your devices intentionally, that's a form of health. And something that I think we love to see across all areas of Apple of how do we make sure that you know, screen time is another great example of something that you may not associate directly with your health, but actually has to do with your mental health and your and your health of making sure you're not attached to the devices too much. You know, we've always talked about the fact that we want people to use their devices intentionally and thoughtfully. We don't expect people to be using their devices all the time. And when you have that top down support, um, you know, I think we're really excited about the possibilities and I think it also just reminds everybody that how health is such a personal thing for so many of us. And actually, it's an honor to be able to help people with their health in these meaningful ways. I love that so much because there are companies who would like nothing better than to wrap you up in their advertising delivery platform every waking minute of your life, like in your hand, on your head, everywhere. But you're a doctor, like a practicing doctor still. You put time in. And I know a lot of companies would maybe just have like rounded up some consultants or serial industry experts to rubber stamp a few health features for their slide deck. But Apple has this, I think like all the way from Steve Jobs' original comments on it. Coming in and making recommendations and not owning the results, not owning the implementation, um, I think is, is uh, a fraction of the, of the value. This desire to actually hire experts and empower them, but also give them actual product shipping responsibility. So what's that like as someone who spent their entire adult life in health now getting to help build actual health features for health people and the future of health? It's, it's, uh, it's such an honor and it's been such a great experience. And you know, one of the things that I am most proud of and that we um, as a leadership team take really, really seriously at Apple is the cross-functional nature of our work, that is the magic. And that is actually how you bring the magic to the features and the products. So to your point, we have subject matter experts, we have clinicians who are really involved in the product development process, but we have worked really closely side by side with our engineering colleagues 
and our design colleagues and really think about how do these important areas that we're looking at, how are they grounded in science? How do we make sure they're technically feasible? And how do we deliver them in a meaningful, thoughtful design that will actually be impactful to an end user? And the, the fact that we have these teams come together, that is probably the thing that I love the most about what we do is we have a number of people at the table developing these features thoughtfully together and it allows for really healthy debate. It allows for healthy conversation and it allows us to push each other on our thinking so that we can really get the best um, features and products out there for our customers. And what is that like building out a feature? Like I know sometimes there are things like you build a blood sensor so that you can get an accurate caloric readout and then you realize, oh, this can actually help with detecting you know, irregular or high or low heart rates, and you can build feature sets out of that or things like fall detection. And you have the health app, but you also have the watch, you have the iPhone, you have security, privacy, accessibility, and you have the challenge, like you said, of taking all this really complicated stuff and making it feel simple and easy to use for very non-medical, you know, non-technical people like me. But I guess also on the opposite side, for doctors who may know the medicine and the science really well, but maybe aren't very tech savvy and don't have any idea what to do with someone who comes in with an ECG off their watch, for example. Yeah, it's um, you actually captured it really well. It is a process and it is a multidisciplinary, cross-functional, uh, lengthy process, but one that is uh, really thoughtful. So the way it works when, you know, when, we, when we think about developing our features and products it, the idea can come from anywhere, right? So the idea is something that we we see from across our teams. But then there is um, a few elements that we put to put into play. There's one, the clinical problem that we're solving. Um, like, you know, are we solving a problem for a, for a user from a health standpoint? And is there some science behind what we're looking at? There's the technical feasibility and the engineering feasibility. Can we actually measure what we want to measure? Can we deliver on what we want to deliver. And then we put the two together and the teams kind of work out, how do we actually quickly validate what we're proposing to solve? And so that's kind of that clinical validation, engineering validation process. And that's a great example, again, where um, our teams work cross-functionally together to really think through that. And then once we see we have some feasibility, we then start thinking through, okay, if we were to do this and deliver this to users, you know, what are the what are the performance metrics and targets that we feel like we need to meet, both from what we feel good about from an engineering standpoint, but also from a clinical and health standpoint. And that's where, you know, your point on the medical community comes into play. We often not only leverage our internal experts, but we work with external experts too to say, hey, if you were to get this information, what would you do with it? You know, what would be the level of acceptability of, of things coming to you? So one thing we spend a lot of time thinking about is false positives and false negatives. We want to make sure that we are thoughtful about not missing anything, but we don't want to overburden the health systems. So that's something we spend a lot of time thinking about. And then we design bigger studies to validate, you know, what we are aiming to do. And then our teams continue to work together to build the algorithms and then the features. And then obviously, if it's a regulated feature, we work through all of the regulated processes and working with the, the regulators to kind of get the features through that process. And then all along the way, we work with design. So working with design to really think through what are we going to actually tell the user? Is it actionable? I mean, I think that's the really important thing is we can gather important information to empower an individual with their health but we want to really empower individuals with actionable insights. And so we spend a lot of time thinking about that. So all of that comes together into this really like magical process that at the end we have features that we, we you know, are really proud of. So things like cardio fitness, walking steadiness, the ECG features, irregular heart rhythm notifications, SpO2. And that process that I just talked to you about, um, you know, can always vary a little bit depending on what you're working on. But pretty much holds true. And I think one of the key chassis to all of this is um, scientific ground truth and making sure that we have evidence um, behind our hypothesis of what we want to be able to develop and tell an individual and that we're grounded in the science, but grounded in amazing um, and uh, strong engineering feasibility and technical um, capabilities as well. My best friend, uh, Georgia, she does a lot of the review videos with me. A while ago, she fell down her basement stairs and really hurt herself. I mean, like, it, it was bad at the time. And luckily, her husband was home. But 
She said the watch caught it immediately and began that countdown to 911. And that was such a relief to her because she didn't know what was happening in those moments, but she knew she had a lifeline there if she needed it, especially if her husband hadn't been home. You and Tim and Jeff and everyone on the team, you get these stories all the time. What is it like getting that kind of of feedback and hearing the kind of impact that the products you're working on have in people's lives, like sometimes literally saving their lives. It's incredibly touching. And I think in in health, I think that's really a big source of motivation for us. Like I'll share one story. We I had gotten a, um, we as a team had actually gotten a letter from uh, um, a customer who she was at home uh, and her high heart, high heart rate notification went off. She happened to be pregnant. She was uh, 36 weeks pregnant. And her high heart rate notification went off and um, she went to the hospital, wasn't particularly feeling unwell, but also wasn't feeling like 100 percent, went to the hospital. And it turns out that she was diagnosed with thyroid storm. And had she not come in, had she come in any later, she potentially would have put her fetus at harm and her baby at harm. And I think, um, uh, you know, she wrote us this letter saying, like, I'm sitting in the ICU now and I was able to deliver a healthy child because of this high heart rate notification that notified me of something going on. Those are just amazing stories. I mean, not only did you have impact on on the mom, but also on the baby's health and that um, those are incredibly motivating to us. And we are constantly searching for new ways to have more impact like that. Every product, you know, saves lives like phones and computers and all these things save lives. But your team is systematically rolling out features that have that sort of direct impact. And it's it's not something we've really seen at large scale from consumer technology before, um, but it's something that I think you, you really can measure on in the impact that it has on the world. Yeah. And I think that's why we're so excited around, especially in Heart Month, why we're so excited around the work that we're doing in the heart space. Um, you know, with we started that journey with high heart rate notification. It was very organic. Um, and then we, you know, expanded to low heart rate notification. And we've received a number of stories where people have picked up issues with their heart. And then, you know, we pulled on that thread a little bit more to work on um, irregular heart rhythm notification and the ECG features, which you know about. And then just to even take um, a kind of taking the heart work and even pulling a little bit more for the work that we've done with cardio fitness notifications. Um, all of that giving you different yeah. views of your heart health. There's one that's looking at your heart rate. There's one that's looking at your heart rhythm. And then there's one that's looking at how your, your body is, is supporting your cardiovascular system is supporting the rest of your body. And, um, um, I, you know, to me, it's nice to be able to pull on those threads and actually have impact in such an important area like our heart health. And we obviously are very early in what we're doing. We, um, you know, we're in the early innings, but we have so much more to do, but really exciting to hear about um, individuals who even take things like cardio fitness notification and it motivates them to move more and push themselves harder. I know I'm, I noticed, I noticed my um, cardio fitness number and uh, I recently had an injury and I noticed it starting to go down and I was making sure that I hit a certain heart rate to make sure that I could continue to keep it up during my um, injury period. And so I think those are those little moments and we hear about so many of those from our customers and those are those moments that I think we have impact in ways that we sometimes don't even see, but um, just a way that we're with you all the time that we think we can really um, improve someone's overall health. And how do you balance all of that with privacy, which is also one of the biggest focuses at Apple? Because there's nothing more personal than our health data, because there are other companies who just believe that anything that you do with their technology, they own. Like all the data that comes off of anything that they created, it's theirs. And you've really put like this line in the sand and said, no, 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 it's really your stuff. And you could be absolutist about it and say, well, only you access your health data ever. But there are people who are just not physically capable of taking their own medications, or there are people who maybe are forgetful and they want a family member involved. How do you balance all of that, that privacy by design with being thoughtful and considerate to the to the end user as well. Yeah. Privacy is the core of everything we do. And just in the example that you gave, you know, we introduced the health sharing feature last year. And in that, we allow the user to have granular control to decide what they're going to share with the person they're choosing to share with. So we really want to put the user at the center to be able to make the decisions of 
what information are they going to be sharing and why are they sharing it? And so that's a great example of where the individual completely controls that you know, element of the experience. And, and also if they choose to stop sharing, they can choose to stop sharing at any time. And that device, that data is encrypted on device. And, and when it's in transit, it's also encrypted. So that's something that we pay a lot of attention to. The other thing that I often tell people, like I often get asked, well, you know, you must have all this ECG information. It must be so great and you can do so much with it. And the answer is we actually have none of that information because that information sits on device on the individual's phone. And only when you choose to participate in a study like I just talked about, you consent to that, sharing that information. But we even make that consent process really clear so that you can turn on and turn off what you'd like to share and you understand why you're sharing it. So that transparency is also really important. So it's control and transparency that are really critical with privacy. And that's something in health that we obviously hold very near and dear. And it's a central tenant to everything we do. My beautiful dream is once the world stops ending, I get to visit Cupertino again, but maybe like I twist my ankle in the bitter and sweet parking lot and I go to one of your gleaming medical centers in the California sun and I don't have to deal with being a Canadian in America or health insurance papers or medical history or records or any of that. I just tap my Apple watch when I go in and it's all just handled. Like before the ortho consult can even get off the golf course, which I know is a huge stereotype, but I can't even imagine how much do, how much work it will take for us to get there in this future. Um, and I'm everyone's lucky it's not me in charge of doing any of that. But I was curious, do you have any of those kinds of dreams? Do you have any visions? Is there anything that you're looking forward to when it comes to the future of health and technology? I, I think we're really focused on, we're laser focused on empowering users with actionable information. And how do we allow for every individual to understand what's going on with them and their own health meet them where they are so that they can have take the steps and we can help provide them with actionable information and insights to take the steps to stay healthy. And that's really what we're focused on. And however that may manifest um, is what we're really, you know, kind of at the center of what we're trying to do in health. Um, you know, like you said, health is something that is so precious to many of us and there's so much more to do. And so we really take it, um, day by day, listen to our customers, um, try to really use the science and drive towards the goal of really having impact on an individual's life by empowering individuals to understand what's going on with their health and enabling them to take the right actions to stay healthy. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for all the work that you and your team uh, put in every year for us. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. This was really fun. So thank you.